Greetings, Commanders. We often talk about the best and most effective ships for AX combat, the so-called meta ships. However, pilots eventually want to experiment with new ships, new builds, and some really want to push themselves with seemingly impossible challenges. This video will focus on the small ships of Elite. They're fast, nimble, and well-armed. Well, at least most of them are. But this isn't about how good each ship is. Rather, it's about how much fun we have flying them. As with all lists and rankings, the views shared here are all subjective and may not align with your own, but that's just fine. It's just one of the things that makes Elite so diverse. Each commander here has built, flown, and found success against the enemy with these ships, so they know what the ships can do and what they can't. I will advise caution though. Small ships are not ideal for new pilots. They punish your mistakes harder and require more refined piloting skills to use effectively. That said, they're a blast to fly, so go ahead and try them out if you're feeling saucy. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. We'll start with the super fun ships. These ships are an absolute blast to fly no matter the situation. The two ships which consistently top the charts are the Vulture and the Hauler. The Hauler as an anti-Sino ship has a truly cult following in the X community. It flies extremely well and it's very fast. It is limited primarily by its single small hardpoint, which usually holds a single small gauss cannon. Where the hauler truly shines is when you bring friends. Flying in a wing of haulers, taking on harder Thargoid variants, is an absolutely exhilarating experience. My most fun fight with this one was probably when the three of us in haulers took down a Hydra. It was hard, but it was awesome. Ewan was supposed to record this, but he is busy killing 20 Medusas in an instant, so this is Commander Mechan instead. Among all elite dangerous ships, large, medium or small, the Vulture handles the best. It orbits effortlessly, while being very forgiving of mistakes. And that boost? It's just sweet. The two large hardpoints may feel underutilized equipped with medium gauss cannons, as there is no large gauss, yet coupled with its four utilities, it is enough to go after medusas and smaller interceptors. The Vulture's main drawback is its inability to use flak or a beam. Flak is flying is fun though! Furthermore, taking on a Hydra will require a lot of ammo synthesis. Ammo synthesis is not fun. Fight something else with it. Ewan's most fun fight with the Vulture was a 1 vs 3 skirmish against the Medusa and two Basilisks. The constant non-stop action felt exhilarating. Attack runs involved dodging around swarms under heavy fire taking full advantage of the ship's exceptional agility. Just short of the most fun but still incredibly enjoyable to fly, the Dolphin, Imperial Courier, Sidewinder and the Diamondback Scout make up the very fun tier. The Dolphin may seem like only a meme ship, but it is a viable anti xeno ship in disguise. I think Saad Kruger forgot to add a hard point. It is the coldest of all ships and has ample internals and utilities. Mine typically has a luxury cabin fitted. The flight model allows for solid orbiting, with good pitch and yaw rates making it a joy to fly. The biggest drawback is the two small hard points. The Dolphin has to fly flakless, no beam, and with Gauss as the only real weapon choice. Weaker interceptors will test your orbiting. A Medusa will require expensive synthesis. The Imperial Courier is a popular racing ship. It is also popular in AX. Speed and agility coupled with strong thrusters make for great orbiting. Sporting three medium hardpoints and plenty of utilities, it is an excellently armed small ship. It also has the most fighter-like cockpit. Yet, the Courier is locked behind the Imperial Navy rank of Master. Last but not least, a small distributor limits both the fire rate and the fun factor, requiring double sinking to achieve its full fire rate. The DBS is an enormously underrated ship which suffers from years of being the ship that nobody wanted to fly. It's a hidden gem with four hard points, four utility slots, a ton of internal space, and the ability to fit more goss than your distributor can handle. If you're coming from a ship that doesn't rely on boost to orbit, you will feel completely at home here since you have a naturally cold ship with wonderful thrusters and a tiny footprint that can punch way above its weight class without breaking a sweat. If I was to say that AX Combat had a perfect snub fighter, I think this would be it. The ship we all started the game in, and generally regarded as one of the weakest ships in the game, the Sidewinder may yet surprise you when engineered and flown by an experienced pilot. It is extremely fast, able to outrun most interceptors without boosting, and boosting near 700 meters per second even with an AX loadout. The Sidey is quite agile and orbits with ease. In short, it's a blast to fly. 
The Sidewinder's main drawbacks are that it is limited to only two utilities and only two small hardpoints. Not being able to mount a beam means waiting for an interceptor shield to decay on its own after each heart is destroyed in a solo fight, lengthening fights significantly or requiring you to fly with wingmates. The following ships are definitely fun, but they come with certain downsides which can detract from the overall enjoyment somewhat. The Viper Mark III is a fast ship. Its powerful armament, paired with the authority the thrusters have, makes for a comfortable setup, but the two utility slots and small power distributor limit its potential and make for a synth-intensive fight. The power plant, being as small as it is, also requires you to come up with some creative power management solutions, but if you can figure that out, you'll have a light and speedy AX ship that orbits nicely and can really dish out the damage while frustrating the Thargoid you're dancing around. I'd say that a Diamondback Explorer is the most underrated among the small Antixino ships. It's a little bit like the Federal Gunship of Smalls. It handles like a brick and it's pretty slow, but it packs a real punch. The true magic with the DBX happens when you realize that it's fundamentally a boost orbiter. Put that little beast on a near-permanent boost cycle and it'll suddenly forget how heavy it is and dance around happily while hitting like a small truck. Last but not least, coming in at over 400 tons, the DBX is the heaviest of small ships which means that it is the best small ramming ship out there. And you really haven't experienced AX combats to its fullest until you've rammed the shield clean off of a Medusa and a DBX. Trust me, it's awesome. Like its smaller sibling, the Viper Mark IV is a very powerful ship. Its boost is the second most powerful in the game, and the maneuvering thrusters are simply fantastic. However, that comes with the downside of being a much heavier ship, which results in a lower top speed. Orbiting is quite nice, but you're still going to feel limited by the two heatsink launchers. It's also illegally tanky for a small ship, so you can take one heck of a beating if you do mess up that orbit and need to reset. The painfully fun tier contains ships that can be fun to fly, but typically under the this is so bad that it's fun mentality. They present significant challenges to an AX pilot, which must be overcome with skill and ingenuity to even work. The Eagle and its sibling, the Imperial Eagle, are the ships I've been recently spending the most time in. It's practical to talk about them together, because in an anti Xeno setting, they are almost identical, except for one major difference. The major difference is that the I-Eagle is faster, but the Eagle has much stronger acceleration. As the extra speed of the I-Eagle tends to do more harm than good while orbiting, I'm presently flying the Eagle. As much as I love flying the Eagles, their single utility slot is crippling for anti Xeno. You'll find yourself constantly synthesizing heat sinks if you use them. The materials grind involved in that is too unfun for me to recommend these ships more broadly. My favorite fight with the Ego is likely an attempt at a high automation Minigun style Hydra attempt, which failed. I'll get that Hydra though, sooner or later. The Adder used to be one of my favorite ships in Elite. After spending numerous hours attempting to kill a Hydra with it, I no longer enjoy the ship. The ship flies poorly, it cannot orbit, and it doesn't have much firepower. The view is also significantly obstructed by the canopy model. If you want a challenging yet fun ship to fly, look elsewhere. Ah, the classic elite ship, the Cobra Mark III. John Jameson had good taste in spaceships, I'll give him that. But that doesn't mean it's a fun ship to fly. Weak maneuvering thrusters mean you really need to work at keeping this thing pointed in the right direction, and the locations of the small hardpoints make it hard to even hit what you're looking at with fixed weapons. The two heatsink launchers also mean you'll be synthing after each attack run, so come prepared with plenty of reloads. On the upside, there is a lot of internal space, so you'll be able to fit everything you need inside. And here at the end is the ship that everyone seems to want but can't have. Don't worry, you're not missing out on much here, folks. The Cobra Mark IV is an up-armored variant of the Cobra Mark III, with increased carrying capacity, an additional hardpoint, and better weapon convergence. As it is only available to commanders who pre-ordered Horizons before its launch, not many commanders in the game today have access to it. If this is you, don't fret, as you aren't missing out. Unengineered, the ship is an absolute brick, and unfortunately, engineering does little to change this. With a careful build, it can boost just barely above 450 meters per second, but its turn rate is horrible and is even worse when your speed is outside the throttle blue zone. Its extra internal slots and hardpoint can't really be utilized without penalizing the ship's already slow speed or taxing its small distro. These characteristics make it a nightmare to use for AX. That concludes our review of small ships for AX combat. Please remember, small ship AX is hard mode AX. 
You'll find links to the build we used in the video description. We are not recommending you use these, these are just builds we use for fun. Now armed with that information, get out there commander and see what you find fun and enjoy, and let us know in the comments below. Glory to mankind, AXI or an out.